All right, people, welcome back. More D and Do commentary. So we are actually joined by a new person who has not been on the channel, but uh, the team might be a little bit familiar. So uh, this is my friend Palofka. Go ahead and introduce yourself. What's going on, everybody? This is the Spiteful Spartan here. And thank you very much, uh, Yubo Mastery, for allowing me to join you today. And you can just call me Daniel, obviously, <laughs> obviously at this point. Uh, so... Uh, you're probably wondering what's up with the channel. He actually has a separate channel that's mostly for uh, Let's Plays. You know, I used to be a Let's Play channel. So if you guys want to go ahead and see that, link in the description. Uh, uh, link in the description, yeah, below. But also, a member of Team Ninja. I know, you're just like, what? There's another team <laughs> member of Team Ninja besides uh, Ryan? Yes. So, yeah, <laughs> another Team Ninja member. So uh, he's going to be joining me for Dando commentary, daily duels, and all that fun stuff as well. So hopefully uh, you guys can continue to support him in his channel, both on Team Ninja and on his Let's Play channel. So uh, we have Dando commentary here. So we have Light X Dark, I guess it's a team name, Mito here, 1154. and Home ab? <laughs> yeah, home ab. <laughs> you have the exercise equipment at home that's giving them home abs. <laughs> right. At 1120. It's like... Okay, so he's piloting Stellars. That's going to be interesting. Yep, Stellars playing, obviously, that hate, that anti-spell fragrance. And as oh, a member yeah. of Team Ninja, <laughs> uh, oh. that Sebastian drama is real. <laughs> oh, oh. I, I don't even want to go into that BS right now, dude. If you guys want an update, no, he still has not contacted me. <laughs> uh, all the all the freaking uh, drama going on with that bo BS. Mm -hmm. so. Holy shit. Anti-spell fragrance, just pretty much locking down pendulums to the point where you can't even play it. Yeah, that, mm, eh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. That's ridiculously oh. fair. There's that set Insta Fusion Pro plays. That that set XC Insta Fusion plays all up in that battle phase. <laughs> yep. You want to go ahead and right. click that button for me? <laughs> Pro Norden, of course. Yep. Probably gonna grab that Ulta or go into something BS. Yep. I mean, what are you going to go into now? Are you just going to go into, I don't know, like a Mist Dweller or something? Just completely try to lock down any graveyard-related effects? Oh. Ah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, all right, so I guess attach the diamond and then hopefully survives and you can make that Nova into Infinity because I believe that's legal now for uh, uh, TCG. Uh, yeah, it yeah. is. So Breaker of Meta. <laughs> uh, as soon as uh, tomorrow, actually. Mm. So or Thursday. Just the pleadies? Yeah. yeah. Alright, just the pleadies. Yeah, so uh, a lot of discussion and division in the community uh, <laughs> uh, between with when it comes to anti-spell fragments, of course, but the big one is uh, Neutraria Beast. Uh, yes. I guess, and I've, I've been going back and forth and trying to have intelligent conversations with uh, uh, people, but it, it really it's really difficult to have an intelligent conversation when uh, they call you idiot and retarded as their rebuttal to your uh, <laughs> your argument. Real, real. No. <laughs> okay. Let's do some real talk right here. The Chariot Beast can be played in so many decks that literally it's gonna be. It's a, it's an out to basic pendulum decks now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their and argument when, is like, oh well, it's kind of like you know anti Pepe, so it's a it's a it's a necessary evil to fight the Pepe. But no, Pepe, Pepe can play, play it. <laughs> so it's not a necessary evil to Pepe, but it's just an evil to the whole game mechanic of pendulums in general, just like anti spell fragrance. Exactly. <laughs> Wow, waste that Regeki. Waste Shit. it, completely waste it. Like, look, look at this duel. Clearly, because anti spell fragment. Look, look, dark light, light dark over here. Mito can't even get into the duel. Uh, another one of the arguments they were arguing is that if there's so many answers to anti spell fragments and Neuturia Beast, that it shouldn't be a problem. So let me get this straight. In this game, in this game based on luck, it is your fault if you do not have the answers to handle the situation, huh? Exactly. I mean. <laughs> The answers to Nat Beast are what? Bottomless, Regeki, Dark Hole. No, F not Regeki, not Dark Hole. Don't negate it. Oh, right. Negated, <laughs> right. Duh. Herp derp. Uh, so basically, anything that could base just bounce it back. But if you don't have those cards, you're basically screwed. Pretty so, much. You can't yeah. touch your pendulum scales, and their and their answer is pretty much like, oh, well, you can just make an XC like a one-on-one or Castell and handle it. How are you supposed to summon two monsters without being able to activate spells in a pendulum-based deck? 
you better hope and pray that you have that card that he just summoned on the field right now, Hat Tricker. Because it's literally Hat Tricker or Bust. Yeah. And that's assuming that, including these hits to possibly uh, enter Spell Rings and Future Beast, that the op- complete opposite, where there's nothing going to happen to the Performage engine and you're going to be con- able to c- keep it as consistent as possible. Exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, um, in my personal opinion, because I, I play lots of anti meta decks, um, Natura Beast, that could go to. Uh, that can possibly get hit. And I can definitely see it getting hit. But Anti Spell Fragrance, that is a card that can definitely stay at three, mainly because it has so many outs. I personally think that they're going to go ahead and limit it and put it in the same boat as those trap cards that lock things down in the same boat as Vanity, Skill Drain, Macro, Cosmos, and that boat. They don't have to go to the extremes of banning it, just lower the consistency of opening up with it, like what we clearly saw. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd say probably limit it, but Beast has to go, because you always have access to it in your extra deck. We've seen oh, this yeah. time and time again, where extra deck monsters... They go from three to zero just because there's always access to it. Like like I said, they're like, oh, it locks down spells, and that's a necessary evil. Well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and bring back Shockmaster. That can do the same thing. That's a necessary evil, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Shockmaster. Yeah. Uh. It's just like, it's like, I don't understand your argument. And, and they, they, they were just being so ignorant and just just so selfish like literally i think one of the guys i was discussing it with just said like no uh i was like well you know sure it hurts pepe but what about all the other pendulum based decks he's like fuck them i was like wow it's really selfish that you shouldn't be able to play any pendulum based decks at all because of pepe being the best deck right (laughs) i mean pendulum based decks are going to be around for a long while Mm -hmm. because it's a one it's a new mechanic and two, Konami hasn't made their money off of it yet. Yeah, so, <laughs> like I said, it, it doesn't matter how butthurt you are and how much you want to go ahead and uh, fight fight the power if Konami deems it worthy. And like I said, it's been on the radar. It's been on yeah. the radar. Uh, like I said, the it's evidence been, of absence. It, it's been on the radar since Klee's. Yeah, yeah, I thought they were going to maybe do something to, like, anti spell programs back when Cleaves were popular, but I guess that was enough because it was only the, the only Pendulum-based uh, deck. But now, I mean, look, just in this one set, we got Dino Mist, we got Pepe, we got uh, Draco Slayers and stuff coming out soon and getting yeah. stronger. So, clearly, that's what Konami's going to be promoting. So, to uh, go ahead and uh, address the cards that can hurt their possible profits, like... You're just not looking at it from both sides. You're literally just looking at it from the selfish point of view of, well, it's an anti-card to Pendulums, and I hate the meta of and top-tier deck of Pepe, so it shouldn't get hit. Ugh. And it's just like, that's not a really good attitude to have when you're trying to make predictions. <laughs> All right, it's called a banless prediction, not a, oh, well, I think that Konami should do this. <laughs> Because if it's a perfect world where uh, it was like ARG where we could actually influence the list like that, then would Stratos still be banned? Of course not. <laughs> wow. So he just went ahead and dropped the Max C, and his, and his, and, uh, and Mito didn't take the bait. I don't understand. Maybe he's gonna take the bait. Maybe punch him some a little bit. He's like, nah, screw it. I don't. I don't need to. I don't just let you take the neg. He actually let him take the Max C neg. Not bad. And like I said with those inherent summons, there's actually a choice. There is no chaining to a pendulum summon. Either he pendulum exactly. summons or he doesn't, so, yeah. Homie yeah, I... kind of stopped the pendulum summon, which I guess might be good, but he took the neg on that Max C. Speaking yeah. of Max C's... <laughs> oh! <laughs> I swear, I mean, Max C's and as I spoke for grades, that's a, that's a big chunk of money right there. Mm-hmm. And, and, and did you hear, like, the, the argument about the reason why everything is okay when it comes to that matter? No, I didn't. They're pretty much saying that I gave her my cards. Oh my god, no. No, uh-uh, no. <laughs> which, which completely is invalid because, uh, you know, Mr. Palofka over here was actually there during the time that I let her borrow these cards. I know. It was, was it the same time I let you borrow the Star Seraph engine for your Stellars? Yep. Same time. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, 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 you... Okay, so... Denko is summoned... Effect Veiler, and what? You're, I guess you're gonna play something now during the end phase or during this turn. Yeah, uh, call um, it haunted or something. Like I guess that's it. You better get you. You better 
play something. Yeah, I think he's gonna maybe maybe play a call of the hunted. Can you even call the hunted a nuclear hive if it wasn't summoned properly? I guess so. Yeah, it doesn't have to be summoned properly to select as a call of the hunted target. It just needs to be in the graveyard. Yeah, because it was warning. Wow. You're no, just gonna he's just gonna second. take it. Guess maybe do something in phase. Like I'm, I'm still kind of lost. Like you, you're letting this Denka Seka wreck you. You threw the Valen, but why? <laughs> Yeah, because Denka's just going to be activated next turn. Mm hmm So, I hope you got some way of getting out of this situation and actually using background during the end phase. During the end phase. Show me potato salad. <laughs> so, like, no. no. I'm sorry. Nope. What, what? Then why'd you throw the Veiler? Well, yeah, that was a complete waste of a Veiler. <laughs> Like, like seriously. What was the point of Valoring if you weren't going to do anything with it? Like, okay. Like, that was... And you're not going to use Altair to revive the Onuklahai in the graveyard? And you're not going to go into Trevair? Uh. Okay. <laughs> God, this is so bad. Seriously, like, okay, that's what you want to do. And Wait, course... he sent back the Pendulum Scale. I guess he can run over the Danko Seca because he used uh, Vega to summon Altair. So I guess that's fine. Okay, and then once again, there's Damage Juggler. Yep. Ah, oh, Damage Juggler. Ay, <laughs> uh, caramba. Yeah. This is... Uh... So, uh, so I, 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 I'm personally... Like I said, I don't have any bias towards anything, and then when people will argue, they always assume that I have some type of bias. Which, of yeah. course, is not correct, you know? I could, I could... I don't care if he gets, uh, if, uh, Beast gets banned or limited. I don't care. <laughs> I don't either. Honestly, I play decks that can work around that kind of stuff. And what the heck is he doing? <laughs> I, don't know. I had to make sure that I said monsters you control cannot attack for the rest of the turn except for Tailwind monsters. Because I was wondering, since he already summoned a non tailwind monster, could he declare an attack with Altair? But yeah, it just says for the rest of the turn. Ah, uh, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So, like I said, I don't care. I don't have any bias, and I don't know why. And the majority of the time when I debate with people, they assume that I have a bias, that, that I'm just another one of them uh, salty pee, pee people who can't get out of a beast situation. But like I said, when you really look at it, how can you get out of a situation? Like, you literally have to open up with the answer, and if you don't have it, then you're just fucked. <laughs> you're just fucked. Yep. And like I said, it's very difficult. Either you have the hat tricker, or... <sighs> I don't even know, because they're not—they're not gonna allow you. They're, obviously, you're gonna, they're gonna negate the Regeki, the Dark Hole, whatever you do. Obviously, you're gonna, yep. you're gonna negate the Insta Fusion that you're gonna try to summon the Norden to even get the additional monster to exceed with. So, yep. Honestly, my best out so far has been the the new card that just came out in Breakers of Shadow, uh, Quaking Mirror Force. Just set it down. Just just put it face down. They can't flip it. They can't do anything with it. They just contribute it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, I've been hearing people talk about uh, Eccentric and, uh, and, uh... And just pop it with yeah, Eccentric? Yeah, summon it, pop it. And, um, oh my god, what's the name of that card? Uh, Ghost Ogre. Oh, yes, Ghost, Ghost Ogre. Ogre. But, uh, then, I mean, like I said, that's your argument, is that they, they should have the answers with those cards. But then I'm counting your argument with an argument and say that, keep in mind, this is, this is not, this is... Not just random meta, uh, anti meta doing this. This is this is Pepe. This is the top tier shit that's doing this. Exactly. So not only will they be able to drop that, uh, that Natria beast, but who's to say that they didn't haven't done things with Luster and Wavering Eyes, Dark destroyed their Aranne, and searched multiple uh, Solemn Strikes. Exactly. Now I got beast backed up with Strikes. So go ahead, try to go. go sure, go ahead and try to Ghost Ogre Snow me. Sure, go ahead and try to eccentric me. I'm just gonna hit you with that that with that strike. And not only that, but just monster, monster I'm, effect, I'm going straight. I'm going to go straight casual on you right here because I I do play a lot of casual duelists, and not many people can afford eccentrics or ghost ogres. There's also that reasoning behind it. Mm -hmm. So even in your perfect world scenario, there's still flaws in your logic. So, but hey, if, if it gets hit, like I said, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if I just saw a cherry beast on it. Unless I'd just be like, yep. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's not just this. It's not just a anti PP card. If it was just a straight up anti PP card, I can understand. It is an anti mechanic card. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, 
Ah, oh, that beautiful, beautiful great that grand horn though. Oh yeah. Yeah, so that's gone. Draw a card and go straight to battle phase. So he goes ahead, he pendulum summons those two, Grand Horn goes off and forces them to the next phase. Can Hat Tricker still go off? I guess Hat Tricker never misses timing, so I guess it would just start a chain outside of Grand Horn, but it seemed like the forcing to the next phase of Grand Horn would make Trick Clown not go off. I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. Yeah, I'm kind of confused about that. <laughs> you know, there, there's the budget strike right there, Grand Horn. If you can't get your hands on some strikes, then at least you got Grand Horn. Exactly. <laughs> I know I'm going to be picking up some Grand Horns because I, can, I, can, I sure as heck can't afford strike. Mm -hmm. Especially on my on my uh, freaking budget. <laughs> so, like I said, I, I just wanted to get everybody's opinion on the matter. I said, I don't care. If it gets banned, alright. If it doesn't get banned, alright. So, like I said, it doesn't phase if, 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 if it happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. Yep, doesn't phase me either way. God. Like I said, we were just seeing a ton of cards that we should see on this upcoming list. Definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, think oh, we, yeah. I think we saw at least at least three or four cards in this one duel that we should see in this upcoming list. Oh, smart. Go ahead and go into that dweller. Yep. So, none of that uh, <laughs> graveyard shenanigans for you anymore. I have no idea what kind of deck that uh, Nito's really playing. All right, seeing obviously that Gem Knight and Garnet, so he can go ahead and set up uh, that uh, them damage juggler trick clown plays. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um. See a couple people saying that a brilliant fusion should be hit, but why address brilliant fusion when you could just address the cards that deal with brilliant fusion? Exactly. <laughs> Addr I mean, why? It's basically the same reasoning that why they, uh, what you would call it, unbanned stash steel, or banned stash steel. Uh, it was, it was some BS reasoning behind yeah, that. Yeah, I think I think DPY Joe Pro said that. Oh, snatch steel is not the problem. Hidden armory is the problem. Exactly. Like, what? <laughs> like no, snatch steel is the problem. No, it was definitely snatch steel. Snatch steel was the problem. It was not hidden armory. You know, so, uh, it's just like, yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and hit Brilliant Fusion for Gemini players when all we have to do is just hit the Damage Juggler. I mean, is really is anybody really going to go through the hoops of doing Brilliant Fusion if there's no Damage Juggler? Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you want to send Trick Clown, that's cute, you know? Yeah. Send that Trick Clown, yeah, that's cute. But like I said, all you need to do is just kill Trick Clown twice and he doesn't do his shenanigans. And of course, unless you press the reset button with Norman, which yep. is also a thing that should be addressed. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So Trick Clown's not that bad when you don't have the damage juggler or the Norman to press the reset button on the Trick Clown. So. Honestly, if Konami wanted to do something right, I could see Norton and Instant Fusion both going to one. I don't think you need to put both of them to one, just Insta Fusion. Because no one's going to play multiple Nordens if you only have one Insta Fusion. True, true. Yeah, one Insta Fusion. Yeah, one Insta Fusion. As I, I don't think they have to go to the extremes of uh, banning Norden like they did in the, in the OCG, especially if you go ahead and hit that Ptolemaios. Oh, yeah. Like, if you don't have access to the Infinity like that, then it's not as bad. Like, if you want to go ahead and get that additional play once... That's fine, and if you're playing like the Call of the Hunt in the Revival anyway, then yeah, more power to you along that lines as well. Yep. But still, the consistency is lowered, so you can you can run all them wastes and Call of the Hunt is to try to abuse Norden as much as you want, but you only have one Insta Fusion, so your consistency of getting that playoff is even lowered then. Yep. So it's just people don't see the multiple angles. You know what the sad thing is right now? Huh. He could bust out Beast right now if he wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> he could. Yep, yep. Look at the consistency of that. You throw in a hat trigger, which can be searched. You throw in the king for a limb, searching that uh, Polamaro, and then bam, right there. There you go. There's Beast right there. Yep. So, as I said, you, you argue that uh, Beast is the anti PP card, but PP brings it out arguably one of the most consistent ways. Another mm -hmm. person was arguing, like, oh, well, we should keep Beast for his six samurais. 
It's like, oh yeah, because that's totally, totally what Konami wants is for your non-profiting random ass six samurais to be able to beat their best cash cow. <laughs> smart. <laughs> that's a smart business plan. <laughs> I, I know, right? <laughs> uh, I'm just glad Ghost Tricks are getting more support. They are? Yeah, Quaking Mirror Force is great support for Ghost Tricks. Oh. I, I thought you meant direct support. I was like, I haven't seen any new Ghost no, Trick cards. Not, I thought not they were direct gonna... support. There's just tons of indirect support. And, and there we go, people. So, uh, first duel kind of locked him down with the uh, uh, with the anti spell fragrance and definitely gave him advantage. And you know, we I you know the, the crazy thing is, we didn't see Deneb this entire duel. Yeah, I just realized that. That's actually really interesting. No Denebs, no Trev, none of that. Literally it, just being able to abuse, use and abuse the rank forms with Norden and anti-spell fragrance. And he had the option to go into Triv quite a bit. Yep, yep. Uh, and oh, uh, I, I can't say that Mito's pendulum-based deck or whatever angle he was going with was the best. But still, you know, the people argue that the, the pendulum mechanic is unrivalable. We literally just saw Talon Rice beat that, <laughs> beat that without even uh, going into the boss monsters. No Deneb, yep. no Rota, no Nova, no Skybridge, none of that. Yep. <laughs> so, I, mean, I think my point is proven. So, like I said, I, if you guys want to go ahead and tell me your opinion, like I said, I would like to have a, a debate with intelligent uh, uh, viewers, not just mega capital G's calling me a retard. I, 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 like, I, I didn't mudsling at you. <laughs> I didn't call you salty uh, assholes anti med is no, but you're going to mudsling at me to try to uh, help your argument? It's just, it's just like the lowest form of debating. <laughs> oh, yeah. Attacking the, the debater instead of the actual topic. So mm-hmm. that's just one of the problems that I was having. So like I said, tell me what you guys think. And like I said, is it an anti, anti-pendulum anti card? Yes. But like I said, it can go both ways. Uh, so go ahead and look at it from the angle of Konami's eyes. It's kind of hurting their profit. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And this Definitely. whole answer thing. I mean, we said the same thing about uh, the Jin Lock, and where's that at? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that's, that's one of their arguments. Oh, well, it's your fault. You should have the answer. Well, you should have had the answer to the Jin Lock. You didn't? Oh, then it's your fault. You lose. Exactly. <laughs> It's like the gin, the gin lock. Good day, good sir. <laughs> you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. Exactly. You fucked up. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and call us for a Dandel commentary. So I kind of went on that tangent there, but, you know, it's good to go ahead and actually talk with uh, an intelligent individual instead of just the ranters. <laughs> so thank you, <laughs> Mr. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Palafka, for joining me. No problem. Thank you for allowing me to... Uh be here today and uh to all of your viewers i hope to uh enliven you on some let's plays and see you soon on my channel yep so link in the description go to the channel hit the subscribe button uh like i said if you were a big fan of me when i was a let's player with the daily uploads of uh of uh, let's plays then you'll definitely like mr plofka's channel because there is some daily uploads and actually uh newer games more relevant games not just uh the rogue things that i played but uh go ahead and name off some of the games that you're actually playing on your channel um, currently we're doing a daily upload of Assassin's Creed Syndicate and a bi-daily upload of Rise of the Tomb Raider with Undertale and a few others just being finished. I'm going to be coming back soon with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist GX season. So you have that to look forward to. There you go, um, people. Lots of games of uh, 2015. And, of course, you know, uh, 2016 games when they come out as time progresses. So uh, if you're looking for a good, consistent uh, upload uh, Let's Play channel uh, with some good, great gameplay, then go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button. I know I already did. Uh, the description will they'll probably, I guess, upload on my channel soon. So uh, look forward to that as well. But this is just a nice, quick introduction to uh, have another Yu-Gi-Oh! player and Let's player as well. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for uh, supporting him. No problem. And thank you for, once again, having me here. And I'd hope to see you all guys on the next video. All right, people. Uh, Thanks for watching, and see you guys next week with some more DM to commentary.